Good morning, little gopher. How are you today? I was thinking of taking you for a walk and then heading uh, out on a train to downtown today. What do you think of that? Always the showman. Always the showman. Okay, we'll do it. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. Well, this is not how I expected to start out my morning. Yikes. Wow. Looks like somebody had quite a morning over there. John and I are going to head out and get a little bit of a walk in. Then I'm going to take the train downtown, like I said. I'm not quite exactly sure what I'm going to look at, but I got about 10 things in mind. We'll just see how the day takes us. Oh, and congratulations if you're a New England Patriots or a Philadelphia Eagles fan. Both of those games yesterday were absolutely amazing. Both teams definitely deserve to, uh, to continue on to the Super Bowl. So that'd be a pretty good one. The Eagles haven't been in there, I don't know if ever or very few times. I definitely know they haven't won one. You know with the broken up tile right next to it? That could almost be an art installation out here. Punk rules. Van Halen? Oh my god, this neighborhood's just screaming for Kenny to come out here and grab this for part of his Robo lights display. Okay. The people walker walks people. Oh yeah, that satellite dish has Kenny's name all over it. Oh, that's interesting. That's a reference from They Live, starring Rowdy Rowdy Piper, which is kind of funny because it kind of goes into what our vlog might be about today. I want to pop in Ross on my way real quick. I want to return one pair of pants. I didn't quite like the pockets on them. So I think where we're going to get off today is I think we're going to go ahead and just get off here at Civic Center. And we'll uh, figure out the vlog from there. Well, hello Lionheart. Today, we're in downtown LA again. And what I want to see today is I want to see an architectural masterpiece and an acoustical masterpiece called the Disney Concert Hall. Now this incredible hall is actually, well it was 30 years the idea in the making, but it's been around for actually 15 years. Now what I mean by that is the idea for this concert hall actually came about in 1987 and it didn't actually get completed and have its grand opening until 2003. What the heck is that thing? Let's go take a look at that. Always an interesting statue or sculpture or something to see in downtown and I don't quite know what this is. I've never actually seen this before. Right here in front of MOCA, the Museum of Contemporary Art. And don't worry, we'll do the mocha another time. <laughs> Museum of Contemporary Art and my legs. And remember what I said about crazy sculptures and statues in downtown? I think that'd kind of fall into the category, don't you? Now this building right here is actually called the Broad, the Broad Museum, and it's a free museum and they have some really incredible stuff in there, but you uh, generally need a an advance reservation um, or you have to wait in line for like over an hour, I read. So I've actually been there, they have some really great stuff and it's pretty popular because they have a lot of stuff that is um, bright and colorful and things that people like to take pictures with and selfies with, so it's pretty good for being a uh, social media communicator. And there it is, this magnificent building in front of us is the Disney Concert Hall. Let's go take a look. 
Well, conceived in 1987, it was actually started as a gift and an idea from Walt Disney's widow Lillian Disney, and she donated $50 million and wanted a new concert hall built for the LA Symphony. Originally they were in like two or three other places before this, but the most recent was the Dorothy Chandler Pavilion, which a lot of people had always said just wasn't a real great, a real great concert venue for a Philharmonic. And so she donated $50 million in 1987, and Frank Geary, the architect, was actually hired to design and construct this building. Now, originally it was supposed to be, the outside was supposed to all be stone or some sort of rock, but it took about four or five years for him to come up with the original designs, and in 1991 they were, they were approved. However, they decided to start with the underground parking structure. Now the reason that they did this is because the County of Los Angeles had agreed to co-finance part of this project and the part that they were going to fund was the parking structure. So what they did was they got that finished first and that was actually a hundred and ten million dollar project just for the underground parking. And then what happened was by 1996, they had started building this from 91 and finally finished the parking structure by 1996, they kind of were running out of money. So what they ended up doing was the mayor and the man by the last name Brode, who actually donated the money for this museum right here, they came together and they started working on a fundraising project and through um, independent donors and contributors, they actually raised the rest of the money for this hall. But it just kept getting stalled throughout that time. Um, from 91 till 2003, they just kept having different um, different things halting progress. And so this actually ended up putting this county of LA in quite a bit of a financial problem because the whole reason they donated to this to um, for the parking structure was because they thought they were going to get all that money back. That was the plan was that once the hall would be opened up they would immediately start getting all that money but since the hall was taking so much longer than they originally anticipated they were out of money. So they did eventually finally get this thing completed in 2003 and they had a few problems even then. Now to save money instead of doing that external rock fixture they ended up going with this stainless steel idea. These stainless steel bent patterns or bent panels and what they originally was go were going to do was it was going to be kind of a glossy finish and then they decided to do it a matte finish. So now it's a matte finish but um, a few of the panels originally and one of them they were actually right here a few of the panels over here were actually done in a glossy finish and that was actually the part that said Walt Disney Concert Hall. That was actually kind of the main part of it. Now the reason that became a problem was because when the sun would hit these it started creating problems for um, people driving along this street. They were catching really bad reflections as well as people that lived in the uh, surrounding buildings. These. Uh, these skyscrapers and the apartment buildings over here, they said that because the reflection, they were getting really bad glares in their apartment as well as um, extreme heat pockets, so their air conditioning bills were going through the roof. And they said they were actually sections of the sidewalk because of the way they were, um, the sun would reflect that you could actually be walking through here in like 140 degree patches of the sidewalk. So they end up having to buffer all that down, buffer the name out, and made the whole thing a matte finish. Now the inside is actually really interesting because the concert hall itself is, uh, the walls and everything are made of Douglas fir and the floors are made of oak, so it actually has what they said is one of the most perfect acoustical sounds in any symphonic hall anywhere in the world. And they said it, it was so good that when they first brought the symphony in here to rehearse for the very first time, they had been doing a Ravel piece and um, they, it's a song that they had done many times for many years and the actual notation, the actual sheet music in front of them was uh, the same one they'd used for decades they said and they said the first rehearsal in here they realized that some of the notes on the actual sheet music were wrong and that this was the first acoustical hall that they had performed in that really did their sound justice and all those little imperfection and all those little notes that were sometimes buried in the Dorothy Chandler Pavilion now would 
come to the surface and when this opened up it was actually the rev the reviews for the concert hall itself were astonishingly glowing they were they were saying it like I said it was one of the greatest of all time uh, symphonic concert halls now if you look over here as we go closer you'll be able to see that they now put the Disney concert hall sign etched in along this part of the metal. And when it was all said and done, the Disney family themselves had donated $85 million from their pocket towards this, and the Disney company itself donated $50 million. And when it was all said and done, the total bill came out to $285 million. But it is a masterpiece, isn't it? Look at that. And there you can see Walt's name. And Lillian said she donated this money because she wanted Walt's love of arts and entertainment to go on throughout this city long after he was dead. I kind of doubt they'll let me in to see the actual concert hall itself, but just the architecture alone I thought was worth coming and checking out. Well, I just found somebody and I asked and she said that to tour the building, well, to tour this, is actually free. However, the tour doesn't include, it does not include, seeing the actual concert hall. I guess you get to see every other part of the building, but you don't get to see the performance space. And that's what we want to see, right? look closely you can see there's an airplane up there making a turn right past uh, right past that palm tree it's still an architectural masterpiece isn't it friends good job Frank Gehry now when it was all said and done the concert hall was finished and came in drastically over budget we're talking hundred and fifty to almost two hundred million dollars over budget like I said they spent 275 to 285 million dollars to complete this thing when it was all finished and the previous halls before that all three of them combined were 35 million to build but for the acoustics and for the experience that everybody has said that they've had here seeing a symphony sounds like it's well worth it now the real bummer is that not only can we not get in and see the concert hall but part of the reason I wanted to show you was because they actually combined two different styles of concert halls to create this but they also designed a custom organ in there that is pretty world-renowned and they said that one of the weird things about it is that most organs the pipes would always go straight up but because of the crazy acoustics that they created for this place they actually had to kind of log jam style the the pipes, they had to kind of lay them in different directions to get the acoustics just right. So, would have been nice to see, wouldn't it? Well, 30 years after its inception, here it stands. And as well as being the home of the LA Philharmonic, it's also the home of the Los Angeles Master Chorale. And one rule to life is, if you see a statue of President Lincoln, you always come by and say hello. On the side it's got the Emancipation Proclamation as well as the Gettysburg Address. And a little plaque at the very bottom that says, the 16th President of the United States. Very cool. And now, let's head out of here. Now when we get out of here, I need to pop into Ralph's and I need to go buy some celery for the juicer. Oh man, those snowboard sandwiches look amazing. Mint chocolate chip, are you kidding me? I am gonna get two more of those, those are really good. All right, where's the celery? I see green over here, it's gotta be over here somewhere. Well, let's get some kale while we're here too. Pretty good deal on it. I wonder why the uh, regular is the same price as the organic. 
slim pickings. I think that's just about gonna do it. And I'm also gonna get one of these kale blazers just for convenience. All right, let's head home and see what Jaw's up to. What does get wavy mean? We had to go to Tailwaggers and buy him some treats, of course. All right, thank you, Michelle. Some more of my Amazon wish list stuff showed up. This is actually a cover for the camera. This is a rainproof bag. You actually stick the camera in here, the lens comes out here, and you can stick your hands in through here to operate it, which is pretty cool. I'm always worried about getting the camera rained on, so I'm gonna have that. And then also, a new camera bag. You can put all your lenses, you can actually slide the entire camera in like that, which my other camera case was a little too small for that. And again, with the rain, sometimes I get worried. So I'll be taking this to Rome and there's another little compartment on top for all the other stuff. So thank you so much. I really appreciate you getting me all this equipment. So nice of you, Michelle, thank you. Well, it's time to call it a night, my friends. I just wanted to thank Callan Bailey, David Schooneman, and Mary Rogers for becoming my newest Patreons. And if you'd like to become a Patreon too, go to patreon.com slash jordanthelion. Thanks for watching my vlog today. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Have a great night. Good.